The Feast of All Saints. All Hallow Mass. The Feast of All the Saints. The lesson is taken from the sermons of the Venerable Bede, priest at Jarrow. Dearly beloved brethren, this day we keep, with one great cry of joy, a feast in memory of all God's holy children. His children, whose presence is a gladness to heaven. His children, whose prayers are a blessing to earth. His children, W. whose victories are the crown of the Holy Church. His chosen, whose testifying is the more glorious in honor, as the agony in which it was given was the sterner in intensity, for as the dreader grew the battle, so the grander grew the fighters, and the triumph of martyrdom waxed the more incisive by the multiplicity of suffering, and the heavier the torment the heavier the prize. And it is our mother, the Catholic Church, spread far and wide throughout all this planet, it is she t hat hath learned, in Christ Jesus her head, not to fear shame, nor cross, nor death, but hath waxed lealer and lealer, and, not by fighting, but by enduring, hath breathed into all that noble band who have come up to the bitter starting post the hope of conquest and glory which hath warmed the M manfully to accept the rays. Of a verity thou art blessed. O oh, my mother the church! The blaze of God's mercy be deathful upon thee. Thine adornment is the glorious blood of victorious martyrs, and thy raiment the virgin whiteness of untarnished orthodoxy. Thy garlands lack neither roses nor lilies. And now, dearly beloved brethren, let each one of us strive to gain the goodly crown of one sort or the other, either the glistening whiteness of purity, or the red dye of suffering. In the army in heaven peace and war have both chaplets of their own, to crown Christ's soldiers with all. Moreover, to this also hath of the unutterable and boundless goodness of God seen, that he spreadeth not the time of working and wrestling, neither maketh it long, nor everlasting, and, as it were, but for a moment, so that in this short and scanty life there is wrestling and working, but the crown and the prize is in the life which is eternal. So the work is soon over, but the wage is paid forever. And when the night of this world is over, the saints are to see the clearness of the essential light, and to receive a blessedness outweighing the pangs of any torment, as testifieth the Apostle Paul, where he saith, The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. The lesson is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. In Elo Tempo Rei. At the time, Jesus, seeing the multitudes, went up into a mountain, and, when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And so on. Homily by St. Austin, Bishop of Hippo. If it be asked what is signified by the mountain, the said mountain may well be understood to figure the higher and greater commandments of righteousness, since those that have been given to the Jews are the lesser. The one God, in an excellent order of times, gave, by his holy prophets and servants, his lesser commandments unto the people whom it still behoved to be bound by fear, but by his Son he gave the greater unto the people whom it now beseemed to set free by love. But whether it be the lesser to the lesser, or the greater to the greater, all are like the gift of him who alone knoweth what is in each epoch the seasonable medicine of mankind. Neither is it marvel that the greater commandments be given touching the kingdom of heaven, and the lesser touching a commonwealth upon earth, since both are like the gifts of that one God who is the maker alike of heaven and of earth. The higher and greater righteousness, then, is that whereof the prophet saith, Thy righteousness is like the mountains of God. Thus is the teacher, who alone can give such teaching, mystically represented as teaching upon a mountain. And when he was set, the attitude of sitting while teaching appertaineth to the majesty of his instruction. His disciples came unto him nearer in the body, to hear those precepts, by the fulfillment of which they should be nearer in spirit. And he opened his mouth, and taught them saying, these words and he opened his mouth, appear redundant to the sense. It may possibly be that this more pompous introduction is adopted on account of the exceptional length of the discourse to follow. 
but it may also be that these words are not really redundant, but the pointed declaration that he now opened his own mouth, who, under the old law, had been used to open the mouths of the prophets. And, now, what saith he? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We have read where it is written concerning the lusting after temporal things, the wandering of the desire is vanity and presumption of spirit. Presumption of spirit signifieth rashness and pride. We are used to say of proud people that they are men of high spirit, and we say well, since spirit is only one of the Latin names for wind. It is so used, for instance, fire, hail, snow, ice, stormy wind. Who hath not heard the proud spoken of as puffed up, as if they were blown out with wind? Hence, alas, the apostle saith, Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. By the poor in spirit, who are here called blessed, are rightly to be understood such as are lowly and fear God, that is, have not got minds puffed up with windy vanity. Amen. Prayer throughout the office. Almighty and everlasting God, who again allowest us reverently to keep in one festival the worthy memory of all thy saints, be pleased, we beseech thee, to grant unto that great cloud of Bedesman the outpouring of thy mercy whereof we are fain. Through our Lord Jesus Christ thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Potter, et filius, et spiritus sanctus. Amen.